Hey guys, Clumsy here. No, it's not a silent trucking episode. <laughs> I just wanted to give a bit of a Halloween vibe in the beginning. Because it might be, I'm not sure if I calculated it correctly, but this episode might be coming out on Halloween. So, happy Halloween everybody. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not a very Halloween-y guy. I'm not very much into horror stuff. Not very much into cosplay or candies either. So this is the best I can offer. A little bit of driving in the dark with some nice fog lamps. Not really fog lamps, it's sheet lamps with fog. More like very dramatic looking, aren't they? But yeah, looks kinda nice. It is actually morning already. If you guys recall from the previous episode, we did part one of this trip from uh, Wrocław to uh, Seged. This is part 2, and we ended the last episode uh, over here in Berno, where we rested for the night. And yes, it is actually morning already, 5.45 in the morning, but uh, still pretty dark. Autumn is in full effect, looks like. So I might have to... Wait a few more hours before the sun actually comes up, but that's okay because at least we get a nice glimpse of the street lamps. And I am recording this right after the previous one, so I might not have read. Uh, I, am, I have not read your comment yet at this point. But uh, don't worry, as always, be assured I will read through them. Okay, thank you, Lori. She can guide us again so I can turn off the GPS. That way we can focus more on the road, enjoy the scenery more, and rely less on the GPS. Right, Alan? Yes. He's still happily sleeping there. I think he likes this truck better than the one in, in ADS. <laughs> I think he likes this better than the Rusty Mac R. Why? What's wrong with the Rusty Mac R? Uh, we're good, we're good. Love the signs here in Czech Republic. Thanks to Pro Mods. Oh yeah, I remember this part. Yes, the one with the tram in the middle. I definitely remember this. Really? Okay. Let's, let's follow the GPS then. I have no idea if this is the right thing, but GPS says it is. So let's follow them. How much more do we need to go anyway? Um, 500 kilometers. I might have underestimated this trip. So it looks like this episode might be a bit longer, guys. Because I might have... Ideally, I wanted to cut it in half. Parts 1 and 2. Right in the middle. Cut it right in the middle. But looks like I ended the first part too early. That's okay. That just means we have more time to enjoy the roads. Why not? Also, let's take let's notice when these lights actually disappear. Because right now we can still see them, but the sun is starting to peek out, the skies are starting to brighten. And yeah, it would be nice to see where that transition is actually, right? Keep right. After fifty yards, turn right. Okay, is it this one? I hope so. so. Yeah, right now we start seeing the the street, uh, the light lamp race. I don't know what you call them, but you get what I mean. And it would be interesting to see when actually that disappears, because it will disappear, right? When the sun shines brightly enough, just like in real life, you'll not see those street lamps anymore, even if they're still open. So we'll see what comes first. Oh crap, you might not see it anymore though, because we're now on the highway where those do those lamps don't exist. Oh, yo, yo, why is there a tree in the middle of a row? <laughs> I can see that. 
Ay, ay, ay. I didn't want to test my luck there. If it was just a visual glitch or literally a tree in the middle of the road. Uh huh. That was scary. Now that's Halloween material. <laughs> oh my goodness. I Maybe mean, we should have gassed up a shell as well. So we are running out of fuel. Not really. We are one fourth. We have one fourth. Maybe it's enough for this trip. Okay. Let's keep on going. Pretty thick clouds today over there. It might be raining later on. But over here. Yeah, good morning, everybody. This is the best time of the day for me. Time when the sun rises like this. Beautiful. Ah, there, yes. Thank you for shining us with your presence. Okay, I see some signs up ahead saying that we are headed towards Hungary because I saw Budapest in there, so that's a good sign. I think we're on the right track here, guys. Is there a compass, maybe? Okay, grass on the road is okay with me, but the tree on the road, that's a different thing altogether. So, once again, this E. You see that E on the computer dashboard on the lower left side? I wonder if that's a an indication that we are headed east? Not sure. Because I am turning a bit here, and it does seem like we're still, still saying east. Let's have a look at the map. No, we're actually is facing southwest now, so that E is not for east. I don't think. Unless that's not working. Unless maybe it should be the compass, but it's not working at the moment. Maybe? Yeah, but we're definitely southbound right now. <clears throat> but then again, if that's not the compass, then what does that E stand for? Does anyone know? Let me know in the comments if you do. And in the meantime, let me check. Oh, that's not the best fuel economy, is it? 44.5. Oh my goodness. Yeah, these highways are not really very friendly. I have to constantly slow down. Roadworks. Stopping at certain points. Yeah, not very friendly. But yeah, you can still see the lights. Very, very subtle now. You don't see the fog anymore, right? Quite nice, the transition. Bratislava. Nice. But we actually can speed up here. Interesting. So it's city area, but you can still go full speed. Because it's still a highway. Bratislava, that means we're in Slovakia now. I missed the flag. Did we pass through any like borders? Well, it's Schengen, so probably no, no borders. But there should have been like flags at least, right? Might have missed it. That's okay. That's okay. And I am speeding, my bad. Let's just coast here. Slow down to 80. Oh, I'm actually not losing speed. Really? Very slowly, at least. Okay, I tried to read one of the signs. I did not recognize any of the places. <laughs> it's not good. Maybe this time we'll get lucky. Vienna. Uh, let's go to Vienna. But Gior is going to Hungary, I believe. With the H. Man, I love reading these signs. Yeah, so it looks like at least we are headed the right direction. Going towards Hungary, so... Keep right. Let's keep at it. Keep right? Okay. Really? Budapest is straight ahead. One second. No, 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 no. That was a very, very misleading direction from Lori right there. Glad I opened the map. Because that keep right was basically keeping right on a sign. On a, on a lane, but not really turning right. Okay, fine. Slow down. 
keep it 80. It's quite entertaining, right? And this is exactly why I turn off the GPS. Because I have, if I have the GPS on, part of my concentration will most likely transfer there. So you can actually go to 90 here. That's one advantage of the GPS though. You can go and check out the exact speed limits. So yes, instead of focusing on the signs, I'll just be looking at my GPS. And as accurate and as functional as that is, that is actually less immersive from the point of view of sightseeing in my books. So I try to keep it off like this. But then again, I'm very new. I'm uh, pretty much clueless about these areas. So I still need some guidance. This is where Lori comes in. So the audio GPS guidance is actually a perfect combo. So you can have the visual vibes and immersion without losing most of the GPS guidance. I like this combo. Nice. And do we have street lamps still on? I think they're now off. Either that or we can't see them at all. I think they've been turned off now. Which makes sense. It's 8.30 in the morning already. Okay, looks like we are crossing over to Hungary. That's Slovakia, I believe. And this is Hungary. Is it? Am I getting that right? Why did it look different? Um, I might have been... One second there. Eh? Isn't that right, guys? Let's double check in the map, okay? Maybe I'm embarrassing myself too much. Yeah, Bratislava. Cure. Yeah, it, this should be Hungary, right? If you go to the cargo market. Yes, it is Hungary. But they just call themselves differently in the local... Uh, term, local language, Magyaror, Magyarorsak, something like that maybe, very interesting, didn't know that, sounds nothing like Hungary, huh, <laughs> interesting, okay, okay, very nice signage, of course, thank you pro mods, and yes, version 142 is not bad, Barely any changes, but yeah, the force feedback part, I'm still half and half on it. I still kind of prefer the... The, um, the force feedback plugin, I think, all in all. Although I'm giving it a chance, so I'm still using the default FFB from the game. But we'll see. Maybe we'll keep, give it a couple of weeks. If I don't like it by then... That means I've given it enough chances, and that means I will be going back to the FFB plugin. That is assuming the FFB plugin still works. I've not tested it since 142. You will see. That's a nice looking trailer in front, huh? Logging trailer. Are headache racks not a thing in European trucks? Are headache racks mainly in an American thing? Because that guy doesn't have it. Interesting. I'm sure some people here who are watching have more knowledge on that than I do. So let me know in the comments, guys. I'm just a driver. <laughs> That's a nice excuse, right? Good. So let's have a look. What is the speed limit in Hungary? It's 80 on the highways. Okay. Yeah, also have an M1. This is the M1 highway. Actually, we can go and do it like that. No, let's just turn it off. I want to keep it off so I can focus on the road, focus on the scenery and the signs. Alright. No um, Seged in sight just yet. I'm expecting we should see a sign showing that city because that's where we're going. The fact that we're not seeing anything referring, pointing to Seged yet. That means we're not yet near, I'm assuming. That's fine, because I am definitely enjoying the view. I want to eventually go to Iberia and explore there, but I'm in no rush. And right now I'm looking for the most profitable jobs, the way I chose this one. I sorted price per distance descending on the cargo market. And this is one of the top 
uh, I think this is top three. So I still look at the overall direction. I want to head southwest. And if possible, I want to go through here in these areas. Past the Balkans, you know, things like Croatia. Uh, past these areas first before we head to Iberia. That I think would give it a nice uh, exposure. Because uh, otherwise we would go through Germany. And we always go through Germany already. So it's nice to change it up a little bit. You know, tour, up, tour it up a little. We're not only after the money here, after all. We have an objective in mind, right? We have the Fred Scania as our next goal. Oh, look at those trees. Autumn is really coming into play. Look at how yellow and orange those trees are. Man, that looks nice. I like the, the variety. Some of them are green. Some of them are evergreen. But some of them are like that. Very, very nice. I like it. So yes, um, our goal, for those who missed the last episode, we have a new goal, Fred Scania is our next truck, going to be upgrading to that when we get enough money. I think it will be quite pricey though, I'm going to save maybe around 200,000 euros to uh, have enough money for uh, Fred Scania, we'll see if that's enough. Then maybe we can also get a matching paint job for this trailer, the SKAO trailer from uh, just TV in Obilino by default, I think, originally. How about that one, total? Hmm. One fourth of the fuel, not a problem. Also, our fuel economy seems to be getting a bit better, 38.6, because we're now cruising here on the highway. So we're consuming less and less fuel, although here, I imagine, as we go into this uh, uphill, this slope, yeah, fuel economy will go bad again. The instant fuel economy at the bottom, 65, yikes. That should be temporary. I quite like, like this dashboard. It's very simple. It's very easy to read, right? Even if you're zoomed out like this, you barely have to zoom in to see the details. But if you do need to, you can zoom in like that and it will show accurate stuff. Very nice. And it shows us the average fuel economy for this trip is 38.9. Not the best. But then again, our skills as a driver, we don't have uh, much experience with echo driving just yet. That's where I'm putting the next few points in. I'm going to max that out so we get very nice fuel economy. And then we'll see. We will see. Yeah, that should improve our... Uh, fuel economy and that should save us some money and it would be very very nice for the score Seged I see it M5 straight ahead nice and it is Seged right it's not Sheged I believe in Hungary the SZ is pronounced like an S if I remember correctly what you guys taught me Hungarian language very very different from Polish the rules of pronouncing things are very different I remember, what is that place? Subotica? Like it's spelled as Subotica, but the C is pronounced as like a TS. So it's a Subotica. Something like that. But is that still in Hungary? Maybe, I think. If I remember it right. And so I think the SZ here in second is uh, just like an S, or maybe more like a Z. But yes, if you have Hungarians. Or watching feel free to comment and correct and enlighten us your inputs are always welcome it's re always nice learning about these intricacies of language slow down slow down there's a speed radar looks like we don't want to be incurring any penalties because we have to save every dime for that next truck okay good no complaints about this truck though. Yeah, it's a perfect workhorse. But yes, yeah, it's, it's not really on the flashy side, is it? Although to be fair, we're not really in a place where we can be flashy yet. So it's just right that we are driving this truck. I think it's perfect for us. Later on, we'll, uh, we'll get there. Yes, 
But yes, it's not only the money that's important, it's the journey getting there. It's quite nice always having a, a goal in sight, a next step. Doesn't have to be big, doesn't have to be long term, doesn't have to be too far in the future for me. Second to the right, okay, we're getting close guys. For me, I'm a very short term oriented person, you know, I, I like planning for the short term. The long term, I very, have a very hard time seeing or predicting or imagining. So I, I'm, I'm, I have a very hard time imagining my goals for long term. But short term, I can get behind. Like I'm, I, I really like the, the saying, uh, putting one foot in front of the other, you know, one step at a time, something along those lines. So I don't get overwhelmed, I just look at the immediate next step. And it's... It's very healthy for my mental well-being. Exit right ahead. Instead of planning my life in its entirety, when there could be so many curveballs that come in along the way, for me the overall direction is only what's needed, and then just planning in detail only on the short term. Looks like we're turning left. Lori, where are we going? Yes, we are. Okay, good. Full stop here. Let's follow the signs. Thank you. Looking good. Hear that engine purr. Alan likes that one. Although my fuel doesn't like that one for sure. <laughs> but yes, we're almost there, guys. We are almost there. But yes, that's something that I really like. The setting of the goals, but not like life goals or anything. It's just the next step goal. I think it's very practical. It gives you an overall direction of where you want to go, but doesn't, doesn't uh, overwhelm you. At least doesn't overwhelm me. So I like... I like planning that way. Uh, very recent example. You guys, I've been telling you guys I've been playing Diablo, right? Diablo 2 Resurrected. They remade Diablo. So uh, Diablo 2 is one of the classic games that I really enjoy playing. Enjoyed playing back in the day, back in when I was in school. Played it with my buddies. And now they did the remake. So me and my buddies are going back and playing it again. And it's amazing and uh, you have to find ways to keep yourself uh, excited for the game because at some point you will finish it right I finished the last stage for example finished hell for those who know the details and then you're like now what now you upgrade your items you start farming you start to grind you start working for it but you always have to have something to look forward to, like, oh, I want that weapon, oh, I want this uh, tool, oh, I want to get this, I want to get that. Because if not, then you'll get bored easily, and you'll be like, uh, what, why am I playing this for? You know, it's just... So there's like, like, there's always that next step for me. And then at the same time, I try to enjoy the, the process, that entire farming, the killing the demons the monsters you know, and just enjoying the gameplay all the while while pointing myself towards that direction I want to head to towards that weapon that I want to upgrade to it's the same here right so we go wherever for sightseeing we enjoy the sights we enjoy every part of the process and at the same time we have a short-term goal which is buying Fred's truck buying that Scania and customizing the heck out of it but yeah to me that's enough no more empire building goodness I think I have been awakened from that I think this is more how do you say more fulfilling in a way and more relatable instead of being a corporate guy with like the biggest uh, empire biggest company ever I think this is more relatable to people this is like your favorite YouTubers, owner-operators, but yes, oi, oh, I remember that guy, Mr. Don't Do It guy, 
didn't remember it was here. Maybe there are other areas as well. Oh yeah, the force feedback here. Very minimal. Mm, I kind of like it but don't. I might have to tweak the settings soon. Just not sure how. Okay, let's see. Uh, I see second and both exits. I guess that's like the direction. It's, it's a big city, lots of exits. There's a truck stop here as well. 24-7 truck stop. I'm actually surprised that is in English. Maybe that's from a mod, huh? Maybe that's from the real company mod from Shumi. A new gut in Esak. I'm, I'm guessing that's north and east, maybe. Just basing from the first letter. <laughs> we'll see soon enough where we need to go. Actually, let me check. We're delivering right. bring this to um, LKW Walter. Okay. Right. 18 tons of cheese. Oh, yeah. Do love me some cheese. Oh, yo, 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 yo. This guy is slowing down so abruptly. Okay, looks like it's right. I don't hear any GPS rerouting yet. It's a good sign. Oh, that's a stutter. Oh no. So are we getting more stutters now that we have an own trailer? I sure hope not. Uh, we'll keep it. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I have one more theory about that own trailer stutter. Uh, remember, I I attribute the stutters to when you're to when you're driving your own trailer because of the cargo market being calculated and whatnot. And the more cities you have, the more the worse that gets. The more cities you discover, the more jobs are calculated. I think that might be true. But it's so hard to replicate. But what about the world of trucks contracts? Do you guys think that's refreshing too? Although maybe not, huh? Because the world of trucks contracts, they're only refreshing. Yards, exit right ahead. Probably when you look at the the market already. That's when they refresh. Right ahead. Because I'm thinking, what if I disconnect my world of trucks contract from this profile? Will it help lessen the stutters? I'm getting stutters a lot now. Granted, they are very minuscule, almost unnoticeable. Go straight. After 15 mm. yards, turn right. Okay. Turn let's right. uh, let's observe. Hopefully, this is a one-time thing. It's not too bad yet. I am very concerned because this is how it began as well for my other profile. The stutters came in very slowly. But surely. But yes, let's give it a chance. And yeah, let's uh, enjoy the moment. Also, by the way, I set up my steering wheel to have an 1800 degree rotation. You can set up that. You can set that up now in the gameplay settings. So if you go to your gameplay settings, you can set up how many degrees you want the wheel to turn. The 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 virtual wheel, okay, not the the physical wheel. Your physical steering wheel will be constrained by whatever steering wheel you're using. Like for me, the G27 has a 900 degree maximum. So you can set your virtual steering wheel here in game to 900 as well. So that it's one to one with your steering wheel. But for me that's not really a concern. For me it's more... I like really the realistic steering wheel um, range of a truck which is 1800 degrees. 1,800 so that's what I set this up to like so I also have some steering wheel tweaks um, might have seen it already maybe not but if you go to the mods list link in the video description you shall see that steering wheel tweak in the miscellaneous section I believe it will go it will uh, point you to a reddit to a subreddit there's a post there and uh, you'll have to change your yards, turn right. you'll have to change your controls at SII file to make this smoother. You'll have to change some settings. 
but that will make the steering wheel much smoother when you're near the center. There it is. LKW Walter, exactly. Thank you. So that makes it, that tweak makes it so, so when you're doing these small changes like this on the highway, they are very small. So that's my, that's the, that was my problem before. When you're on the highway, even the smallest movement in the steering wheel. Thanks, Lori. Even the smallest um, adjustment or movement in the steering wheel was causing a big change in game. So if you're on the highway, you keep fidgeting left and right instead of those small movements, which are more organic. So I found that tweak by a very smart guy, that's why I link it to a Reddit post. And that makes it a lot better. The only disadvantage to that tweak is your wheel will not be in sync with your your physical wheel. Will not be in sync with your virtual wheel anymore. Because uh, yeah that, that tweak relies on something called non-linear steering. And that the steering at the center is very uh, non-sensitive and the steering at the edges when you're nearing the 900 degrees or negative 900 or something like that nearing the edges of your steering wheel bounce then that becomes more sensitive so when you're maneuvering like this you still get the full range but yeah that's the side effect your physical steering wheel will not match the virtual steering wheel but if you're fine with that then uh, yes it gives a much better experience when on the highways so you don't get those um, finicky movements yeah, so check the mods list link in the video the description okay i would have to adjust this a bit that's because i want really want to straighten it out like so Good. Let's make this right. Let's like it. Straighten it out. It's very minor adjustment. On that side, yeah, that looks good. Good. Right. Okay, looks good. Time to get paid, guys. Show me the money. 830 kilometers, excellent, from Wrocław to Seged. 20k, nice, I'll take it, and we are, dang it, look at that, we're like 4 points away <laughs> from level 12, what a cliffhanger, that's fine, that's fine, we'll get there, okay, alright, so we're starting off here next episode, one step towards the new Scania, well, Fred Scania, I'll see. Okay? Anyway, hope you guys enjoy the ride. Oh, it's raining. Okay, time to get to some, some shelter. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Clumsy trucking, guys. Catch you in the next episode. Bye.